What's up? What's up, everybody? Uh, well, welcome back. If you're subscribed here, if you're if you're new because of the thumbnail and brought you in, and you're curious on AMC, I kind of want to just give uh, an overall of it. Uh, well, it had a huge had a huge uh, debate. There's a whole bunch of people in it. You know, I got a lot of new followers actually from AMC, uh, but more people that uh, you know got on the hype train. Then they wanted to take it serious. They can actually make money. Uh, but today, uh, you know, I, I ended up talking to uh, a nurse uh, at one of the doctor's office, and and stocks got brought up, and, and she's in AMC. Her husband convinced her to buy AMC because her husband's in it. They're convinced they're going to get rich. He is. Uh, and they asked my opinion on that. So I'm actually going to go over uh, all of that. If one of you guys is watching, uh, let me know. I obviously, did, we did, obviously didn't go over this in the, uh, the doctor's office, but... Uh, <laughs> what I forget what the comment was, but it was, uh, do you think we're going to go broke? I said, well, you certainly don't have to worry about getting rich. Uh, there are some people that still think, uh, I did a quick search, so we just typed in, uh, yeah, AMC short squeeze. So one of the first things that popped up on YouTube, AMC to 100K, come on. Uh, who pays during liquidations? Still a whole bunch of hype. These are actually newer videos. Like People actually just posted these. Like This is getting re... 85% chance. Wake up. J.P. Morgan recession could force the MOAS, the mother of all short squeezes for AMC. I've already seen enough. Like Now, if you're curious, I've been doing this for almost 10 years. Any one of those guys have probably been only doing this for almost 10 months. A lot of people got their uh, their experience, their first trade. Uh, I know quite a few people. Their first trades are GameStop and AMC. Uh, and they're brand new. All right? So I don't want to call them stupid. I've poked fun a lot already at a lot of AMC people. And they were just brand new. You know, same with uh, like crypto. The second everyone's talking about it on Facebook, you know, all of a sudden uh, everyone's in crypto. And then, then the gurus come out of nowhere. Uh, you know, my story on AMC was I actually bought it like $3. Three, it was like, like three fifty. It was right before a push up. Is it this one? Yeah, 350. Uh, I coincidentally I had made a case for this to be a twenty dollar stock. And I was like, you know what? Uh, it is cheap. It was GameStop had just started its thing, and uh, uh, so made a case. Like, what is this actually worth? Uh, twenty bucks. Coincidentally, a couple days later, uh, shoots up, shoots up to twenty. Uh, while everything else was, I think, soft big at the time, it just sold off. I'm in. I have. What I, I know I had 70000 in Amazon. Just in Amazon. I'm in Amazon. I'm in Tesla. Uh, I, I'm in a lot of things. <laughs> Options place, too. And uh, I'm thinking this is going to be a red day. I open my portfolio. And I'm curious, how am I green? And it was the like chicken scratch that I had in AMC. was so green on the day after that, that push up that it actually had me green on the day. It was laughable. Uh, you know, So we, we did lock it in. Um, and then it sold back off, but then the hype continued, and then, man, things got nuts. Uh, we started seeing the craziest stuff in the world. Oh, it, it's so shorted, and there's going to be another short squeeze. And it already did an impressive job. GameStop and AMC, if you guys made money on it, congrats. What you guys took advantage of was a short squeeze. Uh, a lot of these actually were only just gamma squeezes, and, and you've probably heard that a lot from the gurus. Uh, everyone I've watched describe a gamma squeeze has actually been wrong. Uh, very largely wrong. Uh, a lot of them are talking about delta hedging, uh, but they don't even know. Uh, so I kind of want to go over what that is. It's never. First of all, are we over the whole hundred thousand thing? Like you guys talk about AMC to a hundred thousand, and its peak was seventy-seven bucks. Like we didn't even get to a hundred dollars, let alone a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. Don't be silly. Uh, that's never going to happen. Period. Uh, so this whole game is supply and demand. More buyers it goes up, more sellers it goes down. Now, if every single owner of AMC, everyone, not a single one, misses the, the boat on this. Uh, let's pull up right now, actually. Okay. Uh, let's go to AMC. I'll even explain what Delta Hedging is going on. Let's go to uh, charts, right? All right, so where are we at? 12 bucks. 
So if, if you're on like trade station where I'm at, this is called the matrix. This is what active trade or something over here. These are orders. Like, so this is the, the buy orders. Here's the ask. Here's the bid and the ask. Someone is saying, I will buy AMC at uh, 12 bucks. So that says 130 right now. It's, it's bounced around. It's actually a hundred shares per each one. So it's quite a bit more. Uh, I'm going to buy it here. And, th and these people are saying, I'm going to sell it at, at 1202. That, that's how this works. Uh, it's basically just a, an online auction, uh, nonstop. Now, for it to ever even show up, 100,000. Every one of these people selling their shares, all these orders right here, they'd have to cancel all their orders, and without a single one, they'd all put out 100,000. At least the uh, the ask would be 100,000. No one would ever pay that much for it. And I've seen the uh, the excuses for it, too. Like, there's insurance companies. Uh, they're going to be forced to. Like I don't know if you guys know how this world works, but it revolves around money. Uh, and not your average $200 Robinhood account. Real money. And the stock market is full of real money. You're, you don't have that. And I don't say that to be mean. You just don't. Uh, you're not a market mover. You're not a market maker. You're not providing liquidity. Like you, I haven't seen a single person that knows anything about that talking about AMC at those levels. Uh, but while we're on this, so TOS, when we're talking about gamma squeezes, delta hedging, like... All that has to do with options, uh, which, man, there's still a lot of you guys buying this stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right, so we look, we look at uh, the AMC right here. So it's expecting a $1.71. Between now and July 1st, we're pricing in a $1.71 worth of movement. So if you guys are so bullish and it just heads to the upside, we're at $12 now. We're looking at... Uh, was that 1371? Sweet. It's a far cry from 100,000. Uh, but could uh, baby steps, right? We're getting there one share at a time. Uh, so 171. Now, when we get outside of that, let's just chart this out real quick. So I do this a lot with the, uh, with the S&P. You'll see a little bit more there. Uh, so let's just go to expecting a dollar. All right. So we're thinking this is what's going to happen. We're going to say somewhere within this range between now and July 1st. I trust this a little bit more on the S&P. And my normal followers know this. but So here's what's happening. Market makers that do provide liquidity. The ones that all these gurus keep saying are out to get them. Like, uh, how can I put this for you guys to understand? The apes. So in English, um, it's you versus the suits, right? Retail versus the suits. We're going to get them. It's our turn. We're going to make it happen. All right. You are a football team. You're on, the, you're on the field. There's you versus the suits, the market makers. They are just the playing field. They are literally just there for you guys to play on. Uh, that's it. They're not out to get you. It's not a thing. Uh, there's market movers. People have the capital to move markets. Um, that's a completely different subject. But right now, we're expecting this. Market makers have to hedge. When you guys go out there and think you're going to try really hard, uh, right now, if, if you buy an options contract that's inside like the 1350, uh, we'll say 1050, 1050 to 1350, if you're out here buying calls, the, the, the market maker needs to be at a neutral delta. They sell you those shares, they'll pair it up with someone else, more than likely, or they got to do it themselves, but then they have to sell options contracts. So let's say you buy, uh, let's say you buy 50 shares. You buy 50 shares at 12 bucks. That's gonna put them at a negative 50 delta, which is what we're looking at, right? Let's bring this back up. If this goes way over overhead, uh, hang tight. It'll make sense. Uh, so we're at 54. Let's say you buy 54 shares. This is actually how many shares you control. It's the delta on here. Uh, so you buy 54 shares. Now the market maker needs to go sell one of these calls to hedge your bet. And now they're at zero. Your 54 shares minus their short position, 54 shares of this options contract. Uh, options are confusing because the, the contract is for 100 shares, but this is how many shares you control at the time. So that's how that works. Um, all right, so just keep that in your mind. That's accounted for. It's not an exact one-to-one -one ratio because you saw those numbers as it goes down. The deltas got higher as it as the price strike price pushed up. Deltas got lower. But they're at zero. So you are 
just make it really fast. You are positive 54 shares. Where's the plus sign? There we go. You're positive 54. Okay, because you bought right there. Market maker says crap. Now we have to hedge the bet. We are minus 54 shares because we sold that at the money contract. Again, retail's buying a lot of shares. Institutions, all that, they're actually playing with options, which we'll get into synthetic shares here in a little bit. Like, that's another great excuse. Now, if your calculator works like mine and my math is correct, plus 54 minus 54 should put you at zero. If that doesn't make sense, the rest of this video will not. Um, so you can go ahead and click off. Uh, but for those of you that stuck around this far, uh, if you're an AMC ape and that math made sense to you, there's still hope. So now that that's zero, right? We, they have it all accounted for. As the price pushes up, everything inside here still accounted for. So they took this move right here inside of a dollar seventy. They counted the hedge for everything inside that range. Now, what you guys actually largely saw all the most of the time was retail did get a hold of this and, and pushed it up. Uh, there are short squeezes. Uh, now, when you uh, what moves this whole entire market? More buyers, it goes up. More sellers, it goes down full stop it doesn't matter i don't care what narrative you think you know i promise it is never not that uh, a lot of these things these headlines that you guys think are relevant are literally just to keep that narrative right right where it's at but you, you, you grab it by the balls if wall street bets actually just had one chief one tribe and they all follow that person that would be a lot of liquidity and you force that into one thing you can get people out now, I say more buyers, it goes up, more sellers, it goes down for a reason, not only because that's how it works, but let's say I was short this stock because I think they're going out of business. Uh, you all heard Toy Story bombed, <laughs> you know, so that's why you're short. You know, you guys come up with stupid reasons. Uh, now, my stop loss is 14.45. That's where I put it. I'm going to stop out. I'm short. Hope it goes to zero. I've done nothing but look up bearish reasons to convince myself I'm in the right play. I, I took no counter argument. All I did was look up why it's going to go short, and I have high conviction. I'm going for it because that's, oh, I'm convicted. <laughs> But it goes above. Now my stop triggers. Uh, what you guys don't know is that's called a stop loss. Uh, so it automatically closes your position. If you did that, if let's say you buy a stock and you put a stop loss in, as that stock sells off, it automatically sell. You wouldn't still be holding something as it goes down, and then your money just goes down even further. And then you got to convince your wife why you need to buy more to bring your average down. It drops further, so you got to buy more and you got to buy more. Next thing you know, like you're you're doing anything for twenty bucks just to buy some more, just to bring your average down, and it just turns into a giant mess. You know, there's there's easier ways to do this thing. So what happens when my position at fourteen forty five stops out? It buys my position back. When I'm shorting something, I'm selling to open, buying to close. So now I got a mix of you guys because you guys put some twigs together. You saw it in a movie. And you said, man, that made sense. Twigs, apes together. You guys are strong. And you did it. Good job, team. You're there. You're buying your four shares. Now I'm buying my position back because it just stopped out, which puts it even higher. But also what happens to these, all of these options. These options plays that were all right here. Let's put it at 14 and higher. I just told you all of these are accounted for. All of these. These are not. So as that actually pushes up, anything above 14, like they don't even care about these. These are 20. You're controlling 20 shares. It's nothing. But as it pushes up, now it's 50 shares. Market makers do not have that accounted for. So now they have to start selling options. They got to start hedging or they got to start. Or if you're buying calls, sorry, I did this whole thing backwards. Oh, man. You are buying this options contract for 54. You're buying it at the money. Uh, now the market maker is negative 54, so they got to buy 54 shares. I'm not re-recording this. Um, so they got to buy 54 shares right here. 54 minus 54, I promise it still makes zero. You can check it out on the calculator if you want. Um, anyway, to clarify this, you are buying an options contract because it's leverage and you guys have the balls to do stuff, right? It's not ignorance. It's the cojones. You got your little pebbles and you're going for it. So you're buying the options contract. Now they're at a negative. They're still negative. So they got to buy shares to hedge it. Um, so as it pushes up, um, as it pushes up, they're buying more shares. 
they're neutral here push up now they got to account for all these options contract that are now they went from a 20 deltas to a 50 so now they got to buy just if, if they had it accounted for they got to buy 30 more shares which is more buy side activity hopefully i didn't just lose you guys all by saying that backwards in the beginning but that's what you guys were seeing right here they were hedged for this and then it pops up okay now in that perfect storm in that mix we're outside the expected move. Market makers got to start buying shares to hedge your position. It's not the evil suits. Uh, but on top of that, so you got market makers buying shares to hedge. They're just, it's an algorithm. They're just doing it. No one's, no, no evil empire is there. It's just running it. It's just an algo turned on. Uh, you got people like me that were short. I'm not saying physically, uh, but in my hypothetical scenario, I'm short, so I'm stopping out. Uh, so I'm buying back my position. There's more buyers. You and your try-hard hats, you guys are buying. So there's that. Now that now there's a green candle, you guys love to buy green candles. Like, just love it. So now you're buying even more. And it sends it on a frenzy, which puts it in this, in this loop. Because as you buy it, more buyers, you guessed it, it goes up. As it goes up even higher, now market makers need to do it again. And it sends it on this spike. Eventually, it does get overbought, and you guys run out of your little cojones. You quit buying, or you start taking profit. You start scaling out. Someone told you along the way, you don't go broke locking in profits. So it pushed up. You're selling. Okay, now whether you want to sell a little your position or all your position, you're still selling. You're tilting the scales towards the sell side, which sends it right back down in those algorithms. And it's the same thing in reverse, which is what you guys see. Now, to explain, so that was this right here. To explain what this was right here, because this was comical. First of all, the CEO is playing you guys. This whole thing was a joke. In this phase right here, when it pushed up. So, yeah, I even bought it again. It, it did push up. And I locked it in. But this whole phase right here is where... Um, where is my... Maybe it's this one. Uh, hang on, let's just do vertical lines. Okay, so from right here, uh, probably right here. You know what happened in this time frame? You guys got played. There probably was some institutions. I think there was institutions that were short this. Uh, and when someone short something, it's not just this unfair practice like that's that's kind of silly if you guys think like if the stock market's here but you value it here you're going to buy it but if the stock is here and you value it here you're going to short it you can play this thing a million and two different ways uh it's not evil you're not just shorting something in the dirt because they're not fair uh you know um but they probably were short uh and getting caught with their pants down so you're in a short position and uh, so it's shooting up. They wake up. They are largely red. They're getting margin called, just like you guys think. Oh, they're getting margin called. You think they have to sell. Like, guys, no one has to sell, just like you didn't sell. You probably bought AMC at $62, and you're still in it because you didn't sell. You don't have to. If you are bad at money management and you're getting margin called, you have to fix that margin. But the cool thing about the options world is right here. How do I get money? Well, I can buy one of these in hopes it goes up, or I can sell one of these. Because you went out and bought the $15 strike, it cost you 16 bucks, but someone like me sold it to you. I call this free money. I do it all the time. I sell to people like you all the time. You guys are my job security because without you, I wouldn't be able to collect as much money. But in options contracts, you are the, the buyer or the writer, the, like the buyer or the seller. So I would collect $16 from you. If I needed $16 on my margin call, I could just go out and sell you that one. It'll fill. Looks like 4,500 of you think it's going that what, that direction. And it wouldn't. It would expire worthless, which means I get to keep all your money. The cool thing about that is if I'm an institution and I get to pay people to do things, then then look what I get to do. One now, like I said, remember that conversation I had said where they have real money, right? Not your Robinhood account. They have real money. They could have sold you all the we'll call it twenty four, twenty five strike, and and let's say what's this one? I didn't even last. Let's bring it back down. 
the 70 strike. How many of you guys, even watching this, bought a 70 strike call? You thought it was going somewhere. Some of you guys bought 100. I know you, I even know people that bought the 100 strike. Like, I literally teach options. I, I do all this for, like, a living. This is my main income. And I have friends who are like, hey, I bought this. I'm like, yeah, well, you're stupid. Now, I talk to them way worse than I talk to you guys. Uh, and they still did it. Yeah, it was impressive. Uh, anyway, they lost all their money. Uh, anyone that tried that, because they expired worthless. Um, but if I'm an institution, I can't prove this is what happened. But all I would do is I would keep the hype alive. I would keep you guys excited, because as long as you still believe, you're still buying, you're still transferring your money into my account. That's all that is. There was like a, there was a YouTuber, Michael Kors, I think Trade Trades. I think they were actually on the mainstream news. What better way to get views and keep the hype alive than to just stoke that fire? Hey, guys, what do you think's going on? Like, oh, it's going to be big. It's going to happen. It's going to do this. And you guys know the rest. You've heard all the excuses. You're still touting them today. It's going to do this or it's going to do that. And like, man, synthetic shares, short squeezes, the Moas. <laughs> it's not. And then it just goes sideways. So that's how they clear the margin call because they collected all your money. They sold all of these. They sold all these calls. They sold all these puts. Bing, bang, boom. No more margin call. And they still have the short position. And here you guys are. Just think of in this timeline of you owning AMC, all the ups and downs. And what's physically changed? Nothing. The hype started to die off. So what does the CEO do next? He goes out and he buys what? Gets into gold mining or something? Like, come on. Now he's just getting, first of all, the CEO is making way more money than any of you guys on AMC. Because uh, he's getting paid. He knows his, like, he likes his following, not because he's on your side, but because you guys are paying him. This is a cakewalk for him. And I don't know if I'd be doing anything different. It's a smart business move. Keep him excited, keep him alive. They clearly think it's the suits, and you guys have never met a suit in your life, but it's it's someone. You just you just know it's someone on the other end, and you're going to get them, and, but you're not. And uh, I've been doing this for a while. The suits typically win. And it's just for the fact that they have more money. There, There is deals that go on behind the scenes. Unfortunately, I, I don't know how naive you have to be, but that's kind of how this world works. You ever met a politician? Come on. They've never said an honest word in their life. But if you paid them, it's true. Like That's, that's just how this thing is, and that's why it's always going to be played that way. Um, so your two options when, you, when that comes to reality for you is... Uh, I mean, you can riot if you want. You can uh, uh, get a get your little pitchfork out, get your little sign, and go stand out in front of a building and say that's not right. And people get excited, and nothing's going to change. But you'll feel better for that day. Um, maybe you'll be a part of something, or you can just understand that's how the game's played. Play the game just like everyone else. Unfortunately, it's not in tickers like. AMC and Jimmy. That that phase is, is, is kind of done. What that phase brought on to people that are in the stock market is you guys think there's a short squeeze on everything. So now the new trend for a while now has been just look up heavily shorted stuff because it's going to go to 100,000. It's been a pretty quick recipe. A lot of the YouTube gurus are still saying that stuff. Like, oh, look at the short float. I'm on this website. It tells us hey, this is this is crazy. And if it's wrong, it's manipulated. And But if, if it's right, it's because you saw it coming. It's a very, very biased uh, situation. Uh, but I, I can tell you guys, it's, it, well, I can tell you my opinion. It's not financial advice. The MOAS, it, it's not coming. It, it already happened. That was a very impressive, like record setting short squeeze as it is. You already forced the suits to get into management mode. They needed to manipulate you guys just to sell options contracts. You probably had, some people got caught with their, uh, well, I gotta be uh, appropriate with with their package in their hands, right? It, it wasn't they were caught pants down. Uh, they did get screwed, but they fixed it, and you guys are still stuck holding it. Uh, so overall, I personally I, I don't even care anymore. Um, like I said, I, I had a case to be made that this is a twenty dollars stock, but I mean that's an investment, and I don't even know if that's I have to rework the whole entire thing. Yeah, still maybe twenty bucks. That's, that'd be my expectations for this. And I wouldn't buy any options contracts because I certainly want to put, wouldn't put the clock on it. I just don't think movies are going anywhere. From a fundamental standpoint, AMC is still the biggest. Uh, you know, they. I don't think movies are going anywhere. 
Because there's still people like me that are alive. Like I like going to the movies. I have a TV in every room. I'm, I have four TVs in front of me right now. Like I don't want to watch movies at home. I, I like paying stupid prices for popcorn and going to the movies. Uh, so I think it's here to stay, but I don't think a Moass is coming. I don't think it's ever going to see $100. Uh, try, if I'm wrong, you can come back and tell me just how wrong I am. and, and we'll, well, just look forward to that day, I guess. Uh, but my, I just want to make one final video on, on AMC because it was just, I don't want to say awkward, but it kind of set me back when I found out people are still, they're still talking about this thing. Like, oh, people are still, I, I want to say I felt bad. Uh, but you don't know what you don't know. And uh, some people really, man, they got caught in this stuff. I, I see it on social media. Like Facebook, for some reason, now likes to show me all the, I think, I think the algos picked up. I never told Facebook that, I, that I'm into stocks, but I think they caught on. Because uh, now I get to see everyone's stock advice on there. It's like torture. It, it's like, uh, so my daughters do this. They play school and stuff. You know, it's just like, that's what it looks like you guys giving other people advice. It's like a seven-year-old playing teacher trying to teach the four-year-old. Or maybe you're all just seven, you know. And I don't say that to be mean. It's just that advice is that far off. And just to bring this up, maybe hopefully every one of these is clickbait. That is a whole entire investigative diagram. I don't know. Hopefully all of these are just clickbait. And it's all just going away. Uh, but, man, I'd be careful for any of this stuff. This guy's got a rocket on there. He's like, please go up. I'll be a cloud if not. My response to Trey Trades. He was a big one. Uh, yeah, Trey and Matt Matt Coors. Which I don't want to talk bad about anybody. So, you know, I still respect everybody uh, for doing this. Uh, this is just my opinion. Obviously, that's it. You all have your own. The, I guess that's, this is my final piece I'll end it on. There is a big part of psychology to this and let's let's say i i yeah i told that nurse you don't have to worry about getting rich being an amc i'd actually feel bad if it, if it popped off and, and then what if she and her husband close that position down and it shoots up to a million dollars they they would one their way of trading would change forever they would probably try to shoot me <laughs> Uh, but their way of trading would would just be lost forever. Like th their their mindset, and I knew I should have done it. I would have just driven in so many bad habits instantly into their trading, uh, and that's it. Their their mindset investing would would change. Uh, you know, if you truly believe this is going, then you might as well just ride this thing out. Like you're not going to let anybody tell you wrong because the second it turns around, it's going to be everyone else's fault, and you knew it all along. Um, all I would say is if you truly believe. Just pretend it's going to go to zero. Um, and then imagine all your money goes away. Now that happens all the time at casinos. It's just usually not anyone's life savings unless you got a gambling problem. You know, like when I, if I go to the casino, I put money, I put my chips down. It's because it's going to zero or it's going to make me money. And when it goes away, when they pull my chips, I'm not flipping the table over. I'm not angry because I was, I was literally expecting that. I know a lot of you guys love to just say, oh, it's money I was prepared to lose anyway. And then it goes down and I find out that was actually your life savings. Uh, and you weren't prepared to lose all that. So if you're still in this and, you, and you're ready to argue your 9,000 excuses, why it's going to go to 100,000, I would just say, are you comfortable with losing that whole entire amount? And if you're going to die on that hill, then at least you had a plan. That, that's more important than anything else. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll wrap it up here. Uh <laughs> I gotta. Add, I'm trying to do a call to action in every video. What's your average on AMC? If you're in AMC and it's going to the moon, I only want to hear from the apes on this one. What's your average? Be honest. Don't lie to me. I know the internet. I'm not asking for proof, but uh, I don't want to hear your average is 12 because you just got in. Come on, don't kid yourself. Tell me what your average is. Do I know anybody that has an average of 60 bucks on this thing? Anybody watches as an average of 50 or higher? If you can actually prove to me your average is 50 or higher. On AMC. Uh, hang on. $46 or higher. I will give you my course. I need actual proof though. Because I, I legitimately do feel bad for you. Uh, and we can actually still correct that. There's still money to be made in this market. Anyway, I'll wrap it up here. Let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.